Hi, I'm Hazel. It is almost Saturday today, so it's time to sit down and catch up with a brand new vlog. And has this always been... Yeah, no, get it back up there. This week has been raid testing on the BFA Alpha, and it's, it's, it's good to be back, you know? I think I've been having an easier time of it. I don't know if it's because there's more groups testing raids on the beta than there were on the PTR for Antorus because it's a new expansion, so there's just more people interested. Or maybe I'm just braver now after a tier of doing it and I'm joining the sketchier groups. But anyways, raid testing's been going on and that's been all week this week. Kitty, that's, that's my, are you, <laughs> Kitty? I don't think that's good for the lens. Yeah, so that's one of the reasons why I haven't had a whole lot of videos out, but I have got some pretty good, I hope, footage of the bosses so far, so. Um, and also they look really cool. Boss fights themselves, I'm not going to go into specific detail in case you are avoiding BFA spoilers, but I will say they look pretty good so far. Um, the visual effects in particular are really cool. There's some new things going on visually that I've been really enjoying, but I'm also not really the most critical person of new content. I usually just kind of enjoy whatever and it's all good and I'm just happy and I like WoW a lot. Uh, so, you know. In Live Wild this week, Children's Week is up, and that means that if you are missing any of the 10 Children's Week pets, um, you can just open your pet journal, type Children's Week to find out if you're missing any of them. Now is the time to get them. Um, it's very quick to do, and especially with all of the portals that we have access to now in today's day and age. So that's kind of fun. Um, there's nothing new to it, so if you've been caught up before, you don't really need to catch up. Although apparently there were toy balloons added at some point. Not this year, and I don't think last year, but at some point in, in the world, they added toy balloons. So I need to double check to make sure I have those. And that was kind of it for WoW stuff for me this week, partially because this week I was swept away by an irresponsible snail obsession. I think that's the best way to put it. So to back the story up, I have a fish back there, right? You can't see him because he's being blocked by my cat's head, but there's a bed of fish in a five gallon tank back there. His name's Flutta. He's doing great, but he's had a little bit of a fin biting habit. So I've just been trying different things to try and stop him from chewing on his tail. And one of the things that I tried, I went to the pet store on last Saturday to try and get him some treats to mix up his diet a little more, and then also to get some foam to slow down his filter a bit in case that was what was bothering him. And while at the store, it was recommended to me, and it sounded like a good idea because I've had people recommend it to me online as well, that I should get a snail or two for his tank, you know, something that changes and moves around for him to keep him interested. Uh, supposedly betta fish and snails can do just great together, and I should just get him some snails. So I got him some snails. I got a pair of snails. There is a yellow one that I have named Guido, and there's a black one that I have named Zephyr, and they're adorable. They're super, super cute. I will insert this video that I took of my snails because I wasn't making wow videos this week, but for some reason I was filming my snails. I'm sorry. Yeah, they're super cute. And it turns out that while some betta fish can exist with snails quite well, my fish, not so much. He's kind of a really, really aggressive dude. And, uh, and he seems to think that their little snail tentacles are really good things to do his best to rip off. So that was a little bit traumatizing, but you know, the snails seem to learn how to tuck pretty good, and then I thought that problem was fixed. And then the fish decides that what he really wants is to eat snail food, uh, which doesn't exactly hurt him, but combined with the food that he was already eating, it was kind of bloating him, and betta fish can and will eat themselves to death. So then I'm at a point where I'm not giving them the algae wafers, and I'm like too scared to even try snail jello because he would eat that. And I'm actually like, blanching individual pieces of zucchini and like lettuce and whatnot for the snails and I figured that problem was solved and then one morning I woke up to my fish literally plucking seeds out of the zucchini slice and eating them. This is a carnivorous fish. He's just a special one. Finally yesterday I decided for the good of all of the animals involved to get the snails their own separate tank. So I've got that set up. Um, I've added a couple of live plants to it that I'm gonna try and keep and if that goes well then I might add some live plants to that one but I've basically just been doing a lot of learning and stressing and thinking about and watching my snails this week and I'm hoping now that they have their own thing that it'll take up less of my brain space but now I've just got two snails in a tank that I kind of want to add some cherry shrimp to once I'm sure that it's like super stable so this probably isn't going to fix anything. Anyways, questions for this week. Uh, Parsa asks, have you ever tried Persian tea? Never. I have never tried Persian tea. I did a quick Google search of it when I put this question in my notes and it looks like it's kind of like chai tea, which I have had. But from the sounds of it, if I ever do try it, it's something that I want to make sure I get prepared authentically. It looks good though, and I've met very few teas in my life that I didn't like. Alex asks, what do you think about them just adding a high elf customization to void elves as a new skin tone eye color for void elves rather than the whole other race? Kind of like how Illyria gets to keep her normal high elf appearance but still be able to go in void form. Maybe add some feather options like Illyria has to hairstyles too. 
So a couple things. Uh, feathers and hair, always a good idea. Everybody needs more of them. And I really like this idea. There's obviously a lot of demand for high elf playable characters, and I think that this solution is something that you could potentially implement to both races, give both Void Elves and Blood Elves the cosmetic options to change their eye color and their skin color to become basically, visually speaking, High Elves. I think that that's a perfectly good solution. Um, I think that the default Blizzard response to why they wouldn't do that, if I'm just like guessing, is that they don't like doing things that they think dilute the visual identity of the factions. They don't want to mess with what looks like an Alliance character or what looks like a Horde character. However, to that, I would say, then what's up with pandas? You kind of threw that out the window when you added identical pandas to both factions. So I don't see why you can't give all the elves like some, some contacts and, and skin paint, you know? <laughs> People seem to want it really badly. Marcy asks, I'm curious how you script these logs. Do you plan it out word for word or do you just wing most of it? Could you show us how you do it? So at some point in my life in like the far future, I would kind of like to do like some making of videos where I show more of my processes because that's just interesting stuff to me. But I won't do that like specifically now because I'm so out of time. But um, I don't script them. I do make notes. So what I do is I have a text document and then throughout the week as newsworthy stuff comes up, I add it to the list. And then at the end of the week, I go through the comments and I get the questions and I throw those at the end of it. And a there's usually a little like one to two lines, maybe a small paragraph of, of, um, of notes for like each topic that I want to talk about just to make sure that I don't forget completely what I sat down here to say, but I definitely don't completely script them. Um, something that I do do when I'm recording these or any other camera video is often I'll say a sentence and I just don't quite finish it. Like I didn't even misspeak. I just can't quite spit it out. And then I end up saying it like over and over and over again. It's not that bad in the vlogs, but if I, if I did write a script or if I'm sitting down to do something like an example would be the, um, the making gold for children's week video. If you ever see like a cut after every single sentence, it's because I'm just incapable of speaking and it took me like 35 minutes to say three minutes worth of words and I'm actually getting worse at it. You would think practice would make me better. I don't know what to do. Anyways, that's been my week and the back of my cat's head. And before I go, kitty, why you bite me? You don't want me to pet you anymore? You want boobs? She wants boobs. And before I go, I'm gonna talk a bit about my sponsor for this video, the Dollar Shave Club. So imagine, as many of us do, that you are planning like a, a really good, you know, game day or night or weekend, you know, what have you. You know, you're planning, you've got your snacks, uh, you've got your goals for what you want to do in the game, you know, you've got your beverages, or in my case, like a big stockpile of tea. You know what you're missing? You are missing a $5 starter kit Dollar Shave Club box available at dollarshaveclub.com slash hazelnutty. Inside that box, you are going to get an executive razor handle, which is very ergonomic. It's got rubber grips on it. It's kind of weighty. You could probably like squish a spider in with this thing, although I probably wouldn't, you know. I hope you don't have spiders in your shower. That's always unnerving. That'll also come with four cartridges for it. They are six blade cartridges. So, you know, if you have like finger hair, you know, many people do, and you want like smooth mouse aerodynamics, uh, Dollar Shave Club's got you covered. They will also give you a sample of shave butter, so after you are finished shaving off your finger hairs for optimal mouse aerodynamics, you're going to have the most moisturized finger back hair region that you've ever had in your life. They also include a sample of their amber lavender body wash so you can feel all fresh and clean while you're gaming. And speaking of feeling fresh and clean, you will also get a couple of the One Wipe Charlie's uh, butt wipes, although you can wipe whatever you want. <laughs> All of that can be yours for only five bucks at dollarshaveclub.com slash hazelnutty. And then if you decide that you want to continue getting the razor refill cartridges shipped to you automatically every month, you don't have to worry about it. Um, that's between three and nine dollars a month. Super affordable. And uh, I don't think they include that for me in my sponsorship. And I think I'm going to buy it anyways. So if that's not a good endorsement, I don't know what is. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions that you would like answered on this vlog, leave them as a comment on the most recent vlog, or you know, you can also tweet them to me or drop them in my Discord, you know, whatever you're kind of feeling like, I will probably find them. And I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye.